So I recently posted on my community page or on the channel. If you guys want to catch the next Q&A, make sure you tap subscribe. But I asked you guys questions if you had anything that you wanted to know more about Halo or Halo Infinite in general. And you guys certainly replies. I really appreciate the participation. If you guys want to stay up to date, make sure you tap subscribe and make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Junior Pi asks, do you think we'll ever get an achievement or award for completing Halo Infinite's campaign on Lasso, much like we did with the Helio Skrill armor set? If I remember correctly, if you beat all the Master Chief Collection campaigns on Legendary, you earned Helio Skrill within Halo 5, which is a really great incentive. Now we do see 343 doing some back end rewarding for people when it comes to various features. Clear example of that would be hitting max rank within Halo Infinite. When they first released the ranking system, there was no ultimate reward, you just got like some emblems. Then when Season 5 is released, you got the Mark VI armor set with Master Chief's class, you know, amazing armor set from Halo Infinite. So we've seen 343 retroactively add rewards for systems that are already in the game. So could they add in something saying like, hey, complete Halo Infinite's campaign on Legendary, you get this cool reward in game. That's definitely a possibility. There certainly are rewards within the campaign itself. Obviously they're old and dated now. With a live service game, it's really more about the cool new stuff that you want to utilize. But that was something that was always missing when it came to Halo Infinite. They didn't really feel like you got like a true reward for completing the game on Legendary like you did previously. Though it's been so long since Halo Infinite's release, right? It's been two years now at this point that unless 343 finds some way to rejuvenate the existing campaign for Halo Infinite, either adding in challenges or some kind of new system that can get people to play the campaign more. I don't really see 343 adding any kind of incentives to get people to jump back in and grind unless the game goes on sale. You coordinate that with like some cool new flashy thing you can earn within the game to kind of boost sales or something like that. I can see that happening, but very unlikely. Darius Abbott asks, are you starting to build faith towards this new beginning for 343? I understand being skeptical of them and keep your expectations reasonable, but lately I can't help but get excited about Halo Infinite. Well, I'm glad you're feeling excited about Halo Infinite. There still is a lot of work to be done, a lot of community sentiment that needs to be rebuilt from the lack of content support that the game received and over a decade of mixed reviewed experiences when it comes to 343 running the Halo franchise. 2023 really did feel like a new beginning for 343 and Halo Infinite as well, mainly because of that January we had those massive layouts that really hit 343, basically cutting all the animation and campaign teams. So campaign deal You'll see not happening anytime soon. But with Bonnie Ross out and Pierre Heinz now in, and so many of the senior management that was at 343 when Halo Infinite launched are now gone as well. If for all those people that want hashtag fire 343, I mean, you effectively got it. I mean, it's not even close to the same team that was at launch. I feel like Microsoft and 343 are kind of hitting that reset button again when it comes to the Halo franchise to figure out okay, what really works, what doesn't, how can we effectively produce Halo games? Because Halo Infinite, while I think it's an awesome game, I think the campaign was awesome, I, thought, I love the multiplayer side of things, that it just took way too much effort to make. Not only just in time and man or power and resources, but also just to make it itself. I've, we've heard constantly that the engine for Halo, not only just subspace, but just in general for over the last few decades of following Halo news, that the engine that Halo runs on has always been a major difficult hurdle for developers to get over because it's proprietary. It has its own quirks and weird things that it does. I'm no developer myself, but every time I look at glass door reviews or hear anything about developing for Halo, I always hear the ability to actually make it is the most difficult thing. That's why we've been hearing all these rumors about switching over to Unreal as it might be just the fastest way to make a new Halo game. And that's coming from Jason Schreier, who's a very credible resource. Though I don't really feel like the recent stuff that's been happening with Halo Infinite is because of new management. I mean, there is partially that. I think what we are right now with Halo Infinite is what they always envisioned Halo Infinite to be at launch. It just took us two years to get there. But the reason why it took us so long to get to this point is because of mismanagement, trying to develop an entirely new engine, basically from the ground up, just take that Halo engine and rebuild it while also making a new game cause a lot of bottlenecks of just having a way for tech to be developed so then they can make the thing within the game. Seeing this repeating thing with the old guard of 343 of buying enough more than they can actually chew. The people there were super ambitious. They really wanted to just put their name on Halo and create their own experience, right? Really make a show up case of like, yes, we are the leaders of game development within Halo, but I think they always just kept trying to do more than what was needed for the game. Like with Halo 4 completely reworking the systems that basically make it like Call of Duty when they didn't really need to do that. Halo 5 and in all these advanced movements and this different art style to the whole thing and do like a pseudo live service kind of stuff which devs did say was 
totally unsustainable. And then with Halo Infinite, again, like I said, developing a new engine along with a new game, it's completely new that's never been done before. It's just a lot that they've been trying to do. I think next for 343, just don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just make a solid product that we know that you can do. Shadow Protector asks, will desync issues ever be fully fixed? And will there ever be a separate SBMM MMR for ranked and social playlists? The last thing we heard about desync being fixed was from Unishack here that we talked about this on the channel previously. And also what he talks about in here, we talked about on the channel previously. So make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date. But says when it comes to networking, this is what he had to say about it, saying, We touched on it during a Spartan Chatter earlier this year, but wanted to speak to it again since it's coming up as a common topic after Season 5's launch. Previously, our focus was on improving the existing systems bit by bit. However, we recognize that this was not having the impact we wanted and you expected. So we decided to pursue fundamental changes to the underlying networking model. Since this decision was made, the team has been heads down on a more comprehensive overhaul. An endeavor of this scale takes time, which is why we haven't had many updates to share. Significant work has been done here already, with more still underway. We will share more when it gets closer to public testing phase. Which has been a hot minute since the last time we had a Spartan chatter. But yeah, I remember when they did have this chatter and I covered it on the channel here, but basically they're just going down to the base level again to try to fix the networking to kind of reduce that desync issue. So the days of desync are numbered. And yeah, fixing that would be great. So then what you're playing actually happens on screen. But the big thing here is that with Forge content, this is gonna be massive when it comes to map design in general for developers and forgers, because I've spoken to many forgers who have had to create maps and they basically have to nerf a lot of the aspects that they want to create because it causes desync. So once 343 does figure out this desync issue, it not only will it help out with just the general gameplay experience, but also the ability for forgers to create stuff that can be implemented in the matchmaking and developers to create content that would be more unique and not have to worry about networking issues when getting in the way of their map design or any kind of sandbox items that could be added in as equipment or weapons. It's also great to see that they're going to be doing a public testing phase with this. So we're going to get flights for Halo Infinite, which we haven't had for quite some time. So when that does come around, I'll definitely let you guys know here on the channel. Though you mentioned about skill-based matchmaking and matchmaking rank, two different things right there. Uh, I don't really see that changing a whole lot because pretty much every major shooter out there has some form of skill-based matchmaking involved with it. And I feel like it's an issue that's really only affecting a more of a smaller group of the player base. I think the majority of people who just hop on to play Halo don't even recognize it or even feel the sense of it. People who are more in tune with the game or like, like people who watch YouTube content, people who read the blogs, like those people who are very engaged with the content of Halo and the gaming experience will definitely notice it, right? Because we want to know everything about the game. We love all the little details and understand everything about it. I could see possibly loosening the skill-based matchmaking a little bit if things get a little too strict or the population drops a little too much, but Halo Infinite's been gaining a lot of players, especially with season five. So I don't really see much of that changing at all and the matchmaking skill based matchmaking meter they just use your social matchmaking experiences to then figure out what kind of caliber player you are and match you against similar skilled players though the problem can be where if you're a high skilled player but in a low population area you can get some really unbalanced matches because the skill based matchmaking algorithm doesn't want to throw great players into a lobby where they'll just stomp everybody though i will say that it does feel a bit strict right now i do feel like it kind of kills the social aspect of of playing multiplayer like just playing regular team slayer right it feels like i'm playing ranked you know so why don't i just play ranked so then i can have more balanced settings and actually have something to grind for where if i'm just playing social then i'm just playing just to click buttons i think that's why some of these more social modes that have come into halo event have been just a huge breath of fresh air like the btb unlimited the team arena unlimited the recent ninja slayer playlist with all those japanese style maps because it just leans more into the social aspect which has been missed so much with Halo Infinite and with the strict skill based matchmaking it's tough to just kind of sit down and chill and play Team Slayer but for right now with desync and skill based matchmaking I don't really see much changing anytime soon who shot ya asked in the next future Halo single player experience do you see them continuing the Endless or a new side story? I would really like to see 343 continue on with the Endless and what they set up with Halo Infinite. I think most people agree that the campaign was pretty much great when it came to Halo Infinite. Like, yeah, it didn't have like those crazy set pieces that everyone talks about with different biomes and stuff like that. But 
I found the gameplay fun. I think most people enjoyed the campaign as well. The story was pretty good, even though they killed Cortana off screen, which I'm not a big fan of that kind of stuff, but it kind of ended up working with how they told the story. But 343 really did a great job of setting things up for like campaign DLC or this, the next installment of a Halo story. So I would really hope to see him continue on with that. And we do know that 343 doesn't really want to let go of what they've done previously, right? Because Halo Infinite still ties into what happened in Halo 5, what happened in Halo 4, but feels like a fresh restart while also tying into the stuff that they've done previously. So I can see them doing that again with the next installment whenever that happens. Again, campaign DLC or any kind of story content is going to take some time. You know, we're going to, we're years away from experiencing anything new when it comes to a Halo campaign, which sadly, I think 343 really missed the mark with that because I think they set themselves up really well with Halo Infinite. With the whole Shattered Ring concept, you can just like find a new island, which could be like a winter biome that's kind of floated on in, which has a whole new story of characters and things like that you can find out. It's such a shame because the campaign DLC would have been amazing for, for Halo Infinite. I'm so sad to see that Microsoft pulled the plug on that. But again, it came down to the mismanagement at 343. Maybe there'll be something built in Unreal like we talked about earlier, but we really just have to wait and see. It's Installation 07 asks, what do you think is going on with Tatanka? Do you think playable elites will return to infinite? From last we heard from all the different leakers out there talking about Tatanka, that it is in waiting right now. There isn't really much happening with it at the moment. Their API hasn't updated with Tatanka in the longest time. I think once those layoffs hit back in early January of 2023 and Microsoft hit that reset on the development when it comes to the Halo franchise, so did the reset kind of hit with Tatanka, it seems like. So that leaked out rumored Battle Royale being created by Certain Infinity, it's just kind of in limbo right now. They could be saving it for when they do decide to make the next Halo experience. It could just be dev time that was lost. That's very common within game development. Microsoft has a pretty long track record of spending a lot of time in development when it comes to various products and things and then end up just not really coming out. But imagine trying to release like a Halo Battle Royale in the state that Halo Infinite was in, in 2020. Not just the game itself, right? Still struggling, but also with 343 management being completely overhauled with, again, like I said, Bonnie Ross leaving with PR Heinz moving in. And then you're just going to release like the most important game mode Halo's released in the last 10 years. Like that's just not a good time to do that. Because if you're going to release a Halo Battle Royale, you need to make sure that you're ready to go up and running that once that goes out, because that's going to get the intention of the entire gaming industry. And you can't be having the issues that 343 was having with Halo Infinite with like desync, networking issues, lack of content, lack of updates that we were having then to release a battle royale. That's just going to be blowing everyone out of the water of just being so much work to be done that they just couldn't keep up with it. Like, yeah, certain affinity was kind of behind the whole thing, but it is also working in tandem with 343 and Microsoft. So we could see Tatanka at some time, maybe down the line when the new Halo experience ever comes out. Again, the idea that might completely switch from what was originally supposed to be just a straightforward battle royale, what the leaks and rumors were, to more of a kind of like a PvE, VP kind of environmental kind of thing, which I think would be amazing for it. There's like pseudo battle royale, which then maybe now could just be an extraction shooter, which seems to be the new cool thing within gaming, or they can figure out something completely new that hasn't really been done before. There's still a lot to be done with the mode. It's still in crazy early development, and I don't expect to see it anytime soon. And when it comes to playable elites, I just, can we just like let this go? Honestly, <laughs> I know people love to play as their dinosaurs, but like there hasn't been playable elites since Halo Reach. I think it just feels like it hasn't been that long. I just feel like it hasn't been that long, right? Since we played Master Chief Collection so much, especially when it got updated back in the, what, 2019. If you were to have playable elites in Halo Infinite, I want to see something that kind of builds more into the differences of the characters like we have with the invasion mode within Halo Reach, right? Where you had true to lore scaled elites that had different abilities and different weapons and things like that compared to what players have or if you're playing as a Spartan. But I mean, like it's such a small subgroup of the community. Like there is, they're a loud minority. They're there. There's enough that might be worth making development time for. But those can be the majority of the player base are gonna want to play as Spartans. And personally, I've always hated playing against elites. I just don't like that inconsistency of player models within the game. I just want to shoot Spartans. And get another thing within Halo that I don't really see changing anytime soon. 